flooded batteries, AGM batteries, lithium ion batteries. Which is the best for my solar power system? We're going to be answering that question and much, much more in today's video. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past eight years I've been helping families get their house set up to survive a loss of the electric grid. And of course, in most cases, we're using a renewable energy solar with battery backup system to help accomplish uh, much of that task. Now, in today's video, we're going to be comparing three uh, different common battery types that are available for solar systems. Um, for this video, we're going to be looking at modular batteries only. And what I mean is uh, a modular battery where the battery itself uh, is independent from whatever inverter system that you're using with it, uh, as opposed to an integrated battery system like a Tesla Powerwall or an Enphase Ensemble, uh, for example. Those are integrated battery systems where the battery and the inverter are coupled together in one appliance. In this video, we're looking at modular batteries and we're going to be looking at the three most popular chemistries and where each one might make sense. So let's start with the traditional flooded lead acid battery first. This is the most common battery out there. It's the type of chemistry that's in your car, uh, very common to use in RVs and boats for deep cycling. And the flooded lead acid battery uh, is basically the cheapest battery you're going to find out there. If you're just looking at dollars per unit of energy stored, there's nothing low, uh, lower cost than the traditional flooded battery. However, there are a lot of drawbacks and considerations that you need to be aware of if you go this route. Now, as the name implies, the flooded battery is flooded. So there's actually a liquid, a liquid electrolyte, a sulfuric acid, uh, in between the lead plates inside this battery. Uh, and they do require frequent watering service. So when these batteries are charged and discharged, uh, a lot of the uh, electrolyte can evaporate or, or the water can ev evaporate out of there. So you do have to add distilled water from time to time to keep the battery cells topped up to make sure that the lead plates stay fully submerged. Another thing to be aware of with the flooded battery is that uh, these batteries require ventilation. Uh, they are not safe for indoor use. They need ventilation because when they are being rapidly charged or being rapidly discharged, they actually will vent off hydrogen gas. Now, the hydrogen itself, it's not, it's not uh, poisonous, so it's not something that would harm you, but in high concentrations, hydrogen is flammable. And so that's why you cannot use these indoors in an enclosed space unless you have special dedicated venting to the outside. So be sure that you're aware of that. And then, you know, one of the other drawbacks with the flooded battery is that it, it's not as efficient uh, as either of the other two chemistries. Uh, you're looking at about an 80% efficiency with a flooded battery, meaning of the energy that you spend getting it charged, you know, only 80% of it is going to come back out in the form of usable energy. So uh, there are several downsides with the flooded battery, but the big plus is you're never going to find anything cheaper. So if you need to get started on a, shoe, a, a shoestring budget, you can get yourself set up with a complete battery bank. You could take eight, eight of these six volt golf cart type batteries, string them together in a series for 48 volts, and now you have a usable battery bank uh, for about $1,500. So that's the flooded battery. Next on the list here is the AGM battery. Uh, the AGM battery, that's actually the chemistry that I use on my system here. Uh, AGM stands for absorbed glass mat. And unlike the flooded battery where you actually have liquid electrolyte kind of sloshing around in there uh, between the lead plates, with the absorbed glass mat battery, uh, the electrolyte is actually absorbed and immobilized in a fiberglass mat. So there is no liquid that can spill out or, or burn you or hurt you or anything like that. And so this battery is very common in mobile applications, like on boats, where you, know, you could have a lot of movement and the flooded battery is just not practical or not safe. Another nice thing about the AGM battery is it offers higher efficiency. You're looking at up to 90% efficiency out of the AGM battery versus only 80% with the flooded. And it is safe for indoor use. As long as it's um, configured properly, the AGM battery is not going to have that issue of venting off all this hydrogen gas where it's not going to be safe for indoor use. 
In fact, most computer and telecom data centers use AGM batteries just like this to back up those computer systems. So it's very, very safe for indoor use. In terms of cost, it's going to be middle of the road. It's not quite as expensive as the, the newer lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate batteries, but it's also not as cheap as just the old traditional flooded battery. So the AGM batteries are right in the middle of the road in terms of cost. And in terms of overall life cycle, they're going to last pretty much on par with the flooded battery. You're looking at flooded battery, typically 1200 to 1500 cycle life versus the AGM battery. You're looking at uh, typically 1500 or even up to 2500 for the super premium AGM batteries in terms of the number of times that you can cycle them. Now, when we, we talk about cycle life, what I'm talking about is you discharge the battery, you drain it down and then you recharge it. That's one cycle. And, you know, the cycle life is something you want to consider as well, because in an off grid environment where, where the, the renewable energy or the battery storage is your only means of, of energy, then you're going to be cycling that battery every day. So if you're using a flooded battery off grid, plan on replacing your batteries every five years. Um, premium AGM battery may last you a little bit longer, but still plan on replacing your battery, uh, say five, maybe up to seven years with a, with a super premium AGM battery. However, if you're like me and, and you're, you're using your batteries primarily as a backup only, uh, you may never hit that, that cycle life limit. You know, the batteries may just age out. You know, after about 10 to 12 years, the internal chemistry starts to break down anyway, even if you haven't hit that, that cycle limit of 1500. Um, so plan on replacing your batteries, you know, 10 to 12 years um, for standby service, even if you haven't reached that cycle life limit. And so the AGM battery, in my opinion, is the best for the standby power application. It gives you very good efficiency, moderate cost, uh, and good, good energy storage available when you need it. Now, on the far end of the spectrum is your, your premium lithium ion batteries. These have become more popular on the market here over the last few years. And what the lithium ion gives you is basically the, the best in terms of cycle life and efficiency. You know, some lithium batteries, you're looking at up to 98% round trip efficiency and cycle lives in many cases, three, four, 5,000 cycles. So uh, it does last you a lot, lot longer than a traditional battery, but it also is going to cost you uh, quite a bit more. So, you know, the way I explain it to people is, you know, the lithium battery will last you four times as long as, a, as a, an old uh, flooded battery but it's also gonna cost you four times the price. So you're gonna pay for it up front, and then it will pay you back in the form of a longer cycle life and a longer service life. Now, I know many of you watching this video live in areas with time of use uh, energy metering, meaning that um, you can buy electricity for cheap, usually in the middle of the night, say between midnight and 5 a.m., you can buy electricity for cheap because that's the lowest demand period. Um, and then, uh, to potentially use the battery to run off of during the day to avoid having to purchase during peak hours, right? Now, if you're gonna use a battery in that manner, I would only recommend using a lithium uh, iron or uh, lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate chemistry because it's really gonna be the only one that's gonna give you that long enough cycle life to actually get your investment back. If you were to cycle an AGM battery like that, potentially multiple times a day where you're, you're charging at night, discharging the next day, charging at, at night, um, you're just gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna hit the uh, cycle life, uh, or the end of the cycle life on your battery um, too soon for you to recoup your investment. So um, if you're using the battery in that type of application, the lithium ion makes a lot of sense. Uh, also, if you're going to be off the grid completely, where you have to cycle the battery every day and you know you're going to be at that property for a long time, it may make sense for you to go ahead and use the lithium ion battery. You know, if you can handle the, the higher upfront cost, uh, it will pay you back over time in the form of a longer cycle life. So folks, this has been a, a comparison of the three popular chemistries for modular batteries. Um, as always, if you're getting good value from the information that we share on the channel, make sure you hit that like button and hit the subscribe button also so that YouTube and Rumble and the other platforms will show the video so more people can see it. Well, folks, I thank you for tuning in today. As always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.